My name is Declan Grant. I'm a master's student at the University of Oxford. And over the past year, I've been working alongside Dr. Bartek Papiez, Dr. Guy Parsons, Professor Lionel Tarasenko, and Dr. Adam Maddy, looking at the deep learning classification of cardiomegaly using combined imaging and non-imaging ICU data. Cardiomegaly is an abnormal enlargement of the heart. It usually indicates an underlying pathology and therefore requires further investigation. A common way for diagnosing cardiomegaly is to take a chest x-ray of the patient and then calculate the ratio of the cardiac width to the thoracic width, as I've annotated on this image. If that ratio is greater than 0.5, it would usually be classed as cardiomegaly. Until now, automated classification methods for cardiomegaly have almost exclusively been applied to imaging data sets made up of x-rays. But this is in slight contrast to how a clinician would diagnose the condition. A clinician would look at the x-ray, but they would also consider other types of patient data, such as demographics, blood test results, vital sign values, and laboratory results. And they would use a synthesis of all the data they have available in order to make a diagnosis. So the aim of this study is to develop a classifier which better imitates that clinical pathway by using a combination of imaging and non-imaging ICU data. In terms of related works, the two most, there are two common methods for classifying cardiomegaly. The first is to use a CNN in a binary classifier in order to determine a label for positive or negative cardiomegaly for an X-ray, as shown by the first study. The second common approach is to use a UNET in order to segment the heart and the lungs in an X-ray and then calculate the ratio I described on the previous slide. There is limited amount of work done on cardiomegaly classification from a combination of imaging and non-imaging data. But one such example is the study shown at the bottom of the slide, where they have incorporated small amounts of patient metadata consisting of the age and gender into the image classification pipeline. To the best of our knowledge, there is no existing work on combining routinely measured ICU data, vital sign values, laboratory measurements, with X-ray images in this way. And we think that the limited amount of work in this area is as a result of the lack of suitable data sets which contain multiple modalities for cardiomegaly. The first database we make use of is MIMIC-CXR. It's a publicly available data set of x-rays for some 64,000 patients. This database is broken down into x-ray studies where each study contains images from multiple viewpoints alongside a free text radiology report as shown on the right. Diagnosis labels are derived from these free text reports using automated tools to extract mentions of conditions such as cardiomegaly, and those labels are provided with the database. Second database we're using is MIMIC-4, which contains data from hospital stays from the same medical center as MIMIC-CXR. Because MIMIC-CXR and MIMIC-4 share a common cohort of patients, and they use the same patient IDs across the two databases, as well as consistent dates and times, we can use them together in this multi-modality study. The modules of MIMIC-4 that we were interested in were the core modules with information about patient stays, the hospital, which has laboratory information, and the ICU module, which contains routinely measured ICU data. This is a table here on the right, which lists some examples of the data we're using from this database. So for our metadata, we have things like age and gender. For vital sign values, we're looking at things like heart rate, oxygen saturation, and laboratory measurements consist of glucose measurements, magnesium measurements. We then need to link the modalities in order to get a suitable multimodality data set for training our models. So first we filtered our x-rays to only include those in the posterior anterior view position, which have a positive or negative cardiomegaly label. We then know that cardiomegaly is a chronic condition that progresses slowly if left untreated, Therefore, a period of 365 days before ICU admission to 90 days after discharge was identified as a reasonable period of stability for assessment. For each ICU stay, we first collected the patient's x-ray studies from the image data set. Then we checked for consistency between image labels within this time period. We assume cardiomegaly does not change from positive to negative within the chosen window, and if a patient has conflicting labels, we cannot be sure which is the correct label to assign to the ICU stay. So we remove ICU stays surrounded by conflicting cardiomegaly labels. If the labels do show consistency, we then link the ICU stay 
with the x-ray study that was taken closest to the time of ICU admission. The vital signs and laboratory data, which are usually recorded a few times an hour, are then grouped for each ICU stay and aggregated across the stay. From this, we produce a single feature vector for each stay, including the aggregated vital signs, laboratory data, the patient metadata, and the linked X-ray image. We then implement three models in order to investigate the predictive skill of each of the modalities we're looking at. The first is our multimodal network, which is shown on the slide here. It uses the combination of X-ray images and non-imaging ICU data, including vital signs, lab data, and patient metadata to classify cardiomegaly. High-level features are extracted from the X-ray images via the X-ray feature plot at the top, which uses a ResNet 50 architecture. And simultaneously, a small neural network at the bottom is used in the ICU feature plot, which consists of three fully connected layers and values. And this is used to extract features from the non-imaging data. We then concatenate the outputs of these two blocks, taking 32 nodes from the X-ray feature block and 16 from the ICU feature block, before adding two more fully connected layers. When training this network, we take a two-step approach by first pre-training the X-ray feature block and the ICU feature block separately on their relevant modalities, before concatenating them together and continuing to train the whole network at once. Additionally, we also wanted to implement single modality models in order to compare the relative predictive skill from the multimodal approach compared to the single modality approach. To investigate the skill from images alone, we implemented the same ResNet 50 that was previously being used in the X-ray feature block, but now as an image only classifier. ResNet architectures have previously been shown to perform very well at cardiomegaly classification tasks. We also wanted to evaluate classification from non-imaging data alone. And for this, we used an XGBoost model which has also been shown to perform well at similar tasks that make use of laboratory data, vital signs, and patient metadata. But it has not so far been used for cardiomegaly. So after applying the pre-processing steps that I outlined slightly earlier, we're left with 2,571 ICU stays, 2,404 patients in our data set. And the table on the left here gives an overview of some of the patient characteristics comparing patients with cardiomegaly to the rest of the patients in the data set. The data set was then split into five folds, which were used for cross-validation, and each model was trained on the same five folds, but only made use of the relevant modalities. The results of the classification averaged over the five folds are now shown in this table, alongside their standard deviations in brackets. The strongest predictive skill was shown by the multimodal network with an AUC of 0.880, which made use of all of the imaging and non-imaging data discussed so far, vital signs, x-rays, lab data, and patient metadata. It achieved the best accuracy, F1 score, and AUC, as well as the lowest standard deviations. The image-only model with an AUC of 0.840 shows stronger predictive value than the non-imaging XGBoost model that operated on metadata, labs, and vital signs. It achieved, which the non-imaging model only achieved an AUC of 0.684. This seems quite sensible since cardiomegaly is normally detected on an X-ray and it can be quite explicit in an X-ray image. We then further broke down the types of non-imaging data under investigation, as previous work has looked at small amounts of metadata, but not vital signs or lab measurements. As shown by the bottom two rows, the model performed better with the patient's labs and vital signs than it did with only the metadata. To conclude, we have shown a method for using the MIMIC CXR and MIMIC 4 databases to curate a suitable multimodal training data set for machine learning research. We have proposed a multimodal network which is able to classify cardiomegaly from a combination of x-rays, vital signs, lab measurements, and patient metadata. And we have also implemented single modality approaches for comparison and shown that the combination of non-imaging and imaging data led to the best performance overall. For future work, we'd like to extend this approach to a wider range of patient conditions to investigate how the relative predictive power of non-imaging versus imaging modalities changes depending on which condition you're investigating. We'd also like to investigate better ways of incorporating the time series data into the pipeline in order to attain as much of the time series information as possible. Thank you for listening.